Now where are we? Okay, that's going to link up with all the doors and stuff that open from the other side. Just looks like we're out in the middle of nowhere on this map. Oh no. Ooh, and I managed not to aggro you. Good thing I barely moved. Seems to be two enemies. Maybe I don't have to aggro them at all. We only have two items on us, so I suppose I can spare some room for this repair spray. Reunification. Reunification at any cost. Orbital defense cannon battery. Veneta, 12. Boyan Katez in our crosshairs. Artillery divisions of the People's Army. There's something there, just behind them, that I can pick up. It's probably just ammo or whatever. Actually, let me see if I can get it from here. Oh. Ah, oh, that's gonna lead to that door. Oh, there's a lot of doors here. And a lot of enemies. You. Flare. Not just yet. Rifle ammo. Bioresonance technology and its limitations. No other technology has shaped our nation as bioresonance has. Would we ever have been able to free ourselves from the stranglehold of the Empire without the support of replicas? Essential technologies like climaforming and induced gravity would be impossible without bioresonance technology. Despite that, it feels like we've made little effort to really understand or replicate bioresonant effects with conventional technology. Our progress in the development of electronics and microprocessors has stagnated for nearly a century now as we focus solely on new ways to instrumentalize this barely understood phenomenon. Take replica production, for example. The process of duplicating a neural pattern from a gestalt host to a replica brain is still not fully understood. How does synchronicity happen? Why is the duplicate imperfect? What happens to pre-existing patterns in the receiving brain? Recreating a replica purely with microprocessors and digital programming may be far out of reach, but I believe that we've become overly dependent on a poorly understood technology controlled solely by a few gifted individuals. It may not be long before we're back where we were under the Empire. Pareidolia. That's when you see patterns in things that don't exist. I believe. I wonder if the patterns on these butterfly wings are important. I feel like it could be. Could this be related to the butterflies? I think it is, looking at it closer. This looks like an A to me. I see a bunch of A's. This one sort of looks like an R, but A is the one I predominantly see. This looks like an E. This looks like an O. And that looks like an N. Which would spell Aeon. A-E-O-N. Let's see if those actually exist here, because there's not that many letters to choose from. Yeah, there was an E. Yes. What are those? What are those in there? Are those pupa? Or whatever they're called. Cocoons?
They're moving. They're alive. Does this mean something? The symbol here. I think not. That same symbol is here on the outside. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that doesn't mean anything. Okay, I want the rifle ammo and I want the thermite. Now we're full. That one's red. So is that. Oh! That one's also red. That one's not. Whew! That's a lot of enemies. Shotgun rounds, patches, diskette, the red one. Okay, yeah, I remember the, that's as far as I read in that walkthrough. It said that somewhere up here would be the red disc, and that contains the information you need to figure out the passcode to the bookstore. And that's all I know. Ooh. What's that? Ah, oh, sweet, that can stack. Or, I guess I just went directly into my gun. Nice. Yeah, that's cool. That's really, that's really nice. So even if you don't have the inventory space for the ammo separately, if you do have room for it in your weapon, it'll just load it. Yeah, so I guess I just took as much as I could. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Man, the nearest save room is down a whole floor. Let's just pop out here, unlock this door, and then head back to the right and go down. Because there's still more unexplored stuff there, and there might be another place to save there. This is going to be a little hairy. Oh, wait, I can't. I can't unlock that anymore. It's just covered in flesh, isn't it? Yeah. We should heal. This floor I haven't explored, and back here is just down to where we were before. So this is all... Is, oh. I, oh, shit. Burn the big one. I guess it's not even really a big one, is it? The ones that kind of like come up out of floorboards. I don't know. I find them more intimidating than the normal ones. The red eye. There exists a strange folklorish idea in many sectors of Rotfront related to pareidolia, the tendency to see meaningful images in random patterns, like seeing a face in an ink blot or letters in a smudge of dirt. It's well known that the so-called Red Eye is simply an anticyclonic storm produced by a high-pressure region in the atmosphere of Rotfront's planet. Yet for some of the early settlers of Rotfront, this natural phenomenon became symbolic of their struggle and way of life. That red spot in the sky became a perfect metaphor for the ever-present surveillance by the protectors and the tight grip of the central government on Heimat. Even today, the idea of an unblinking, watchful eye observing their every move still resonates strongly with the people here. 
During the celebration of Mondfest at the end of each season, adult citizens will sometimes give students ration marks that have been dipped in red paint. Officially, the red paint is said to represent the blood of those who died in the revolution, but the red coins share an eerie resemblance to that red eye. Or is this just pareidolia too? Should you ever receive one of these red eye ration marks, remember to clean off the paint with acetone or a similar paint thinner. Spending or regifting paint covered coins is considered to bring bad luck. That doesn't go anywhere. Yeah, we're just far away from any save point. No way around that, I guess. Okay, back with a clean inventory and some weaponry. I think this calls for some grenades. There's a lot of enemies here. Let's gather them up. That worked really, really well. Oh, hey. Where does that go? Down to the disinfection room. Do I want to go down there real fast? Um. Well, I guess that would be faster than going all the way around any other way. I think we can grab everything, or almost everything. Let's get the most important stuff. Quest item, ammo, shotgun rounds, and then I don't need the patches, but I do have space for them, so why not? Let's, oh my god, they're already getting up. Let's ride the chute. Down to the watermelons. Let's check out the red floppy. Metabank. Ah, so medical data on all of these people. Well, that's going to give us all of their vitals. Yeah, their PKZ. I'm supposed to look at the last digits of the PKZ for the uh, birth date. Let's see, is there anything here important for the other people? The people that aren't, like, front and center in the story? Oh, look at that downloading. Again, it's so cute. Yeah, nothing jumped out at me as important other than the PKZ identifier giving me their birth date. So yeah, for both of the Itao twins, their ID number ends in 560524. Or both... Erika and Isold. Five, six, zero, five, two, four. Hope it's not too dark. I don't think it is. Song of the Gods. Banned. Possession and distribution of this publication is prohibited prohibited and punishable by the Fourth Cultural Protection Act. There exists a connection between all of us that few are fully aware of. A song that we all dance to, but few can hear. This deep vibration of the cosmos cannot just be heard and felt. We all resonate in harmony with it, shaping it, deforming it around us. Those select few who can consciously perceive it often fear it. Too oppressive is the sound of the stars, too invasive the noise of the unaware around them, polluting the song with their fickle emotions. But every once in a while, some are born that cannot only hear and play this music of the worlds, but who can conduct it. 
gifted individuals capable of manipulating the essence of the world around them. Many believe that the Grand Empress is such a being. Her immense will bent humanity into the Empire of Yusin and lifted us to the stars. It was her power that imbued life into the first of the machine servants that now carry the weight of the Empire on their carbon steel backs. Well, if this is the back room, then this must be the front of the store. I couldn't find her. I've looked everywhere. But she's not here anymore. I can't go on. I'm sorry. Oh no. sisters. The card of death, and I think that's the sixth and final card. God, I feel like I should put candles in those dishes, light some sort of some sort of shrine for them, but I don't have anything. Interesting. This sort of like hub room has changed. Now it's dark and bloody, and that thing that we saw, that is the thing we saw earlier. Uh, we saw it earlier. Uh, here at the atrium. <clears throat> at the atrium. Ah, and we're directly. Beneath it. Okay, so it fell, fell down. And now we're able to get it. That's probably the ring that goes to this puzzle here. Is it too dark? Nope. The light well above has been consumed by the mass of meat, releasing some debris that was caught in the nets above. So that must go here. Well, I've got all the cards now. Rather terrifyingly, holding all six on me at the same time means I have no room for anything else. Also, I noticed, at one point off camera, there's a flippy switch. I'm not exactly sure how that helps, and I don't know which card goes where. Okay, if you place them down with the UV light on, then it shows you a symbol that we can use for that other puzzle. But I'm still not sure about how to get the mapping between the card and the place correct. Actually, wait a minute. I think I do know how to get it. Because this card has a certain vibe to it. You see... Uh, let's inspect it. You see the symbolism on it. The, um... The red... Like the red background with those, like, lines of white. I think 
I feel like that is associated with rot front, and I think we can verify that by looking at our documents. We've seen posters of uh, probably every place. Let's see what the first one we got was. So this is going all the way back to the beginning of the game. I guess the first one was Buyan. Yeah, see, it has like a... Was that an octagon? Hexagon? I forget which one is which. But it's also yellow. There's definitely a card that has that sort of vibe. So Buyan. It's like octagon or hexagon with yellow. Which must be this one. Yeah, for sure. So Buyan gets the sun card. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do the rest off camera. This is my best educated guess on the right ones. Some of these fit very well, and some of them didn't. Okay, no, that did not work. Uh, I had to look up a walkthrough, and thankfully, once again, did not get completely spoiled on the solution, and I still have to figure it out myself. But now I see what I was missing. It's the Dream Diary, which is actually right next to the table. I never thought that that would be directly related to the puzzle, but it totally is, and that totally makes sense. It's right next to it. Sixth night, I dreamt I was an imperial farmer. I embraced my lover in the red deserts of Katez when a storm consumed us, the sand grinding us down until nothing remained. So, red desert, or actually the real key honestly is lover and Katez, and also sixth night. Lover. And, well, it is red. And it's the sixth major Arcanum. And it's pretty much the same for all of the other dreams. So let me map those out. Here's our final layout. There we go, yes. Oh, I don't like that. Oh no. Wait. We've been here before. Yes. Requires a key. Three of them by the looks of it. Seems to be the insignia of the safe manufacturer. National flag. It's meaningless. Black and white pictures of the paintings Ariane used to make. Old imperial serials. Ariane loved reading these. Textbooks on radio operation. These used to belong to Ariane's mother. Light switch. Old wooden wardrobe. Ariana used to keep her clothes in here. I see red coming through cracks in the door. The computer screen is blank. Ariane's old radio transmitter. It's still transmitting. Can I... I guess I can access my inventory so I could turn on and listen in. It's on 195. Hmm. Let's just do a frequency sweep. Yeah, nothing there. The last seal has been broken. It's time to go home. Pick up the king in yellow. Uh, not just yet. Let me take a look at the door. The door won't open yet. Okay, I think it is time to go then. What are these seals that we're breaking?
Where's this now? No map. Auntie's note. Ariane, I left some of yesterday's dinner in the fridge for you. You can warm it up when you get back from school. Please pick up the books your uncle ordered from the Itao bookstore on your way home. Remember to leave some space in your school bag for them this time so they don't get wet. Workforce assignment for Ariane Young. We've been informed that your compulsory military service period was recently completed. According to our files, you have previously graduated from Mandelbrot Polytechnical High School in Rotfen Sector C. Da, 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 have recently submitted an application for a military service assignment, Penrose program. You've been processed by Aeon Workforce Assignment, previous work experience, store clerk, the photo store, part-time compulsory military service, long-range radio operations officer training. Should you not be accepted by a military service program by the end of the season or find other employment, you will be assigned the following workplace. The Sierpinski Production and Mining Facility on Lang. Twenty pistol rounds. Why are you giving me so much? I don't like that. I mean, I like it, but I don't. Letter from Mother. My dearest Ariane, I'm so glad to hear you're feeling better again. I was very worried when I heard from your aunt that you're in the hospital again. So remember how you used to get sick so much as a child. Please don't overexert yourself, okay? The photo you sent me is very interesting. What a strange coincidence that she looks so much like you. You could be twins. Perhaps she's related to us somehow, though I don't know anyone named So in our family. From the looks of it, it was shot on Veneta. Your military service will begin soon, so you might be wearing a uniform like her soon enough. Please send me a photo when that happens. Love, Mother. Yeah, the two people that look so much alike. Is that why it even got confused within our own memory? Because remember how like the picture and the name of who we were searching for kept changing, especially early on. Given that all our memories seem to be fragmented. It makes sense. Hmm. I feel like I should be ready for a boss fight. Okay, I'm loaded up with healing and ammo. I've got the flare gun with an explosive loaded and then a couple of flare shells to put in it. And then I have the shotgun, five loaded in it, and nine for backup. That's pretty good, I think. Oh, I should equip this... And I actually need to heal myself. Let me just use a normal repair spray for that. This is the end. Leave forever? Ooh, okay. Looks like my instincts were right, but that's now scared me to save again. <laughs> Adler's note. All efforts to contain this illness have been in vain. All the Gestalt workers have succumbed to it, leaving only dark shadows on walls and floors where they died. And soon, all of us replica will have lost our senses and turned to writhing masses of flesh. I now believe it was not an infectious disease, nor some form of poison or radiation. It was a slow corruption of reality itself. As I've relived the same cycle over and over, each time details changed. Things are twisted, added, removed. How long until it all turns to nothing but noise? So this part, leaving only dark shadows on walls and floors where they died. That explains the shadow we saw on the table a while ago. 
and also the shadow we saw on the wall just outside of the bookstore or the photo store. A red dream, a crashed ship, a strange gate, a hole in the ground, an island beyond reach, memories from other lives, dreams of suffering and loneliness, a promise, a search for someone lost. I saw her in the red emptiness, waiting for me. We had made a promise. As the memories of a stranger rushed into my mind, I felt the borders of myself blur. Now I can no longer tell where Falk ends and Elster begins. You must turn back. There's nothing for you there. You've tried so many times and you've failed every time. Don't you see that you're ruining everything? This is your final warning, Adler. Falk's memory. We were dancing to that song they start the broadcast with. We fell asleep watching that movie we had seen before so many times. If only I could take us back to that time when we were happy. These memories are mine now. I have a feeling we might actually get a happy ending. Because I have a feeling in a weird way that this whole game is a love story. Why did you return? There's nothing for you here. She'll never dance with us again. No matter what we do. She doesn't even want us anymore. Both of us, we are incomplete. Let us become whole again. No, thank you. I don't think a grenade would be a good idea here, but I think a flare might. Obviously it's not going to kill them with just one hit, but I'm hoping it does damage over time or something. Oh, I can pick up a spear. I was thinking since they were down, maybe I need to, to like uh, interact with them somehow. Hmm. Oh, it's all corrupted. Wait, can I use this? I can. Ooh, I'm in the orange. But I do have my auto injectors equipped, so they will use automatically. Let's load the grenade. Hmm, I can use it, but I can't equip it. So I think I have to use it when they're down, probably. Probably here? I can't, maybe the front? No. Where do I use it? Man, I have to resist the urge to heal so bad. Inspecting it doesn't help either. <laughs> oh, 
Oh. What is this? Ooh. Oh man, if I used... Oh, I have used my healing and I'm soon to use my other one. Ooh. Yeah, I think I need that repair spray. Let's use it now. I'm out of ammo. Ooh, can I pick that up? Oh no, you don't want to be near that. Now I can maybe pick it up. Yes. Oh, that's a lot of shotgun. Nice. How am I looking? Terrible. I'm in the red and I've used up both my auto injectors. I guess I'll use my puny little patch. Why not? around oh I think I think the um, spear got used automatically just by pressing F when I was near them I just mashed F and then we switched to this other environment okay so I think I've wasted massive amounts of ammo but I might still be able to do this if there's ammo and health in the environment which it probably is run helps. Oh, oh no. Yep, 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 that worked. I'm not sure if I need to shoot it or just survive for a bit and then it'll fall down. Don't shoot it, don't shoot it, don't shoot it. Oh, I don't even have that weapon. That's no good. I need to take care of these ads. That totally missed. Okay, immediate heal. That does an immediate heal, and then this will heal a lot, but very slowly over time, so let's use it now. I don't think I have any weapons. Oh, 
How we do it on health? Not great. Let's use this. Yeah, I just have the spear, so I just have to hope that they exhaust themselves, I guess. Shouldn't have gone in the corner. Not a good corner. Use a patch. I wonder if I can stab them when they're not downed. That feels unwise, but I'm not sure if I really have a choice. Let's try it. No, I, I don't think that worked. Please exhaust yourself. Oh, yeah, I think they did. Yes, yes, yes. There's absolutely fuck all to pick up now. How's my health? Yellow, so not great. No healing, no weapons. I just gotta hold on. Come on, come on, come on. No, 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 no. That's so hard to see with all the corruption. Oh, Christ. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, I can't believe I did that first try. Now we are one. I've been waiting for this for a long time. The space intentionally left blank. <laughs> Once again, you've returned. Are you really willing to go through with this once more? You've seen what happens. This world cannot take much more. This may be our last chance. If you go back, it'll all fall apart. I can't let that happen.
Ugh, God. You'll destroy everything. This time it opens. Penrose Briefing Phase 2. I think this is the same one we saw before. Yeah. Cycle 225. When I signed up for this mission, I just wanted to get away from everything. I was sick of rot front, of school, of the photo store. Sick of the fake smiles and the whispering behind people's backs. When I saw the photo of that soldier, I wondered who she was. Was she happy? Was her family proud of her? Did her comrades love her? Since we looked alike, could I have been like her? But in the end, I just wanted to leave. Nothing I had done or made ever meant anything to anyone. So why bother? Here, I'm finally free. I get to be by myself and to do what I want. I can finally be happy. Cycle 648. Talked some more to the Elster unit. She's different from the replicas I knew back home. Nothing like my teachers or the Blockwort protector. I know she didn't have a choice, but it feels like she's also here because she didn't fit in. It's like we've run away from the world together. At first I didn't like having someone around, and I was glad that she's quiet and didn't approach me. But lately, I've missed having someone I can talk to. It's been so long since I've last seen another person. I never thought I'd miss it. Except her, everything is the same in here, always. Nothing ever changes. Briefing phase three. Congratulations, you've survived 3,000 cycles, reaching the final phase of the Penrose program. With the end of the operational lifetime of your replica unit approaching, it's time to prepare for the final phase of your mission. If you have not found a suitable world for landing by this point, accept that you will not. Find solace in the thought that others might be successful where you failed. As you're probably aware, your ship's spare parts and rations will soon be depleted. Life support systems and reactor shielding will soon begin to fail and radiation may begin to leak from the cooling system. We recommend you do not attempt to prolong your suffering by reusing old filters or rationing supplies. Instead, make peace with your fate. We suggest that you ask your replica, while it is still functional, to spare you a slow and agonizing death, or that you take permanent rest in the cryogenic pod. Remember, you will die having served your nation by partaking in a glorious demonstration of our power. Jesus. Another unfinished painting. There was never enough time. Oh, there's radiation leaking from the cooling system. Cycle 1294. Had a strange dream. I was listening to the radio with my mother. Like back then, the numbers were on, and mother was taking notes with a book on her lap. 
It was that book I saw in the shop window of the bookstore where the twins lived, the one with the yellow hooded figure on the cover. When I went there to buy it, it was gone, and Erica said the protectors had confiscated it. Or was it Issa? I can't remember. Cycle 1840. Everything is always the same. I feel like I'm trapped inside this ship. I know every bolt on every panel in every room of it. I've seen everything. I've done everything there is to do in here. I can't concentrate on anything. It's like there's this fog inside my head. And whenever I try to do anything, I just can't focus. I want to go outside. I want to breathe fresh air. I want to feel wind on my face and in my hair. Cycle 2503. I think I lost more hair. I'm sitting here, getting older. Every time I wake up, I feel older, weaker, sicker. I get out of breath so easily lately. And my back hurts when I sit down. How much longer will this go on? It feels like I'm just slowly dying. Cycle something. Probably 5,000. I'm tired of it all. Every time I go to sleep, I wonder if I'll wake up again. I'm scared that it'll be the last time I said goodnight to her. Did I say it right? Will she be okay? What if one of us just won't wake up tomorrow? I don't want to die. I don't want to live anymore either. Everything is just so exhausting. I just want to lie down and disappear. I just want to sleep. Please just let me sleep. Please just make it stop. I couldn't keep my promise. Despite my best efforts, I eventually fell ill, too. It had to end this way. It's time. This is all that's left. Go home. I've come back for you. It's me, Elster. Elster? I'm sorry, but I don't remember. It's okay. Please, just let me stay by your side. A little longer.
Now I have to wonder, is that now the real end? I don't know. Okay, just took a look at the wiki for Signalis, so I am going to spoil the other endings. If you do not want them spoiled, then I'll just say thank you so much for watching. I've really enjoyed this game. If you're staying and want to hear all of the endings, let's get into it. So yeah, there's quite a few endings. The first one is the, well, it's not really an ending, it's the false ending when it played the credits for the first time. And then when you go to the main menu, the character's eyes are dull and lifeless because they're dead or almost dead. So that's the false one. And the first real ending that we just got was the memory ending. So there's four real endings to get. Only three of them can actually be gotten on a first playthrough. So of the three ones that are possible to get on a first playthrough, there's the leave ending. In that one, Elster is unwilling to enter cryogenics and leaves the ship. She removes her armor plating and walks on the planet's surface. She collapses and dies. The next one is the memory ending, which is what we just got. And then the third one is the promise ending. Elster finds Ariane in the cryogenics pod and wakes her up. Ariane remembers Elster and their promise. Elster carries out the promise and kills Ariane. Having suffered critical injuries, the luster in Elster's eye disappears and she dies next to Ariane. And which one of those you get depends on just various stats of basically what you did throughout your playthrough, like how many enemies you killed, how much damage you took, and things like that. The fourth ending that you can't get on a first playthrough, which I'm going to call like a secret ending because you have to jump through a lot of hoops to get it, is one where you open that safe that was in Ariane's room, the one with the three locks on it. You can't get those keys on a first playthrough, but on a second playthrough, if you dial the radio into the right frequency and like be in the right place and maybe use a certain thing in the environment, that causes you to get the keys. And if you arrive to the safe with all three keys in your inventory, you can use them, grab something from within it. Um, I think you also have to enter... Yeah, it says you have to enter a 20-digit code <laughs> that was displayed the first time Elster was in Ariane's room, apparently. Um, so you need that on top of the three keys. And then you can take some white lilies from inside of it. And what happens then is Elster picks up the lilies and is seen placing them at a ritual site in a dark, fleshy landscape. She dies, and five other dead Elsters are shown surrounding the site making a total of six dead Elster units. At the center of the ritual is a glowing object. The scene returns to the Penrose 512 with a red eye dangling overhead. Inside the wrecked Penrose, Elster and Ariane are seen dancing together in Ariane's quarters. A sweet ending with an extremely sinister undertone. <laughs> yeah, I think I was... Right, that this is a love story. I mean, it, it is definitely a love story, but I was definitely wrong about it having a happy ending. No matter which of those endings you get, it's not a happy ending. Like, the worst is the leave ending, where you just walk away and just die out in the nothingness on your own. That's the worst. And then the one I got, the memory ending was a little bit better. Because, you know, we find our partner and we try to keep our promise and not leave them and come back together never leave them behind, but they don't remember. And then we just die there with them. And then a little bit better than that is the one where Ariane themselves remembers the promise, but otherwise it's pretty much the same. We kill them and then we die, so we die together. I suppose keeping our promise, staying together, never leaving each other behind. And then the secret one I, I, I mean, I guess you could interpret that many ways, but I would interpret it, given the fleshy landscape apparently in the background, as kind of like we've melded with the flesh and all of our consciousnesses are mixed together and we're just reliving happy memories. But, you know, we're gone. We're absorbed or something. <laughs> Whatever happens <laughs> with the flesh, I don't know. So none of them are happy endings, but... At least the one I got, we did 
keep our promise to some degree, as much as we possibly could. At least it wasn't the leave ending. That would have been absolutely horrible. This is still heartbreaking, though, honestly. What a sad, what a sad, sad love story. Jesus. They're such a cute couple. Oh, I adored the scenes showing them dancing together on board the Penrose. That was so cute. Like, oh my god. Oh. I freaking love this game so much. I can't believe it took me like a year to finish it. Just life happened, you know. But I fell right back into it. Into its intoxicating atmosphere. Something about that mix of just like sci-fi horror, existential dread, being absorbed into fleshy bits going down in inside of fleshy holes, very Silent Hill 2 style. All of that mixed with a gay love story. Oh, so good. It's like, it feels like it was basically made for me. I just wish it had a happier ending, but I mean, it's fitting. It is fitting how it ended. Hmm. All right, that has been Signalis. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for joining me.